everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you my tall hexagon box. Um, as you can see, it is a hexagon. Um, I do like these types of boxes. I think they are unique and I think that you can fit so much in. So you could fit um, lots of sweeties and chocolates. You could fit some hand cream, um, some samples of sort of shower cream, body wash, shampoos, those sorts of things. Um, they just make a really nice sized gift box and again because of the um, the tallness of it, the height of it, you can get quite a bit in there um, and I really like it. I've gone with the pansy patch because I haven't used it for quite some time and I felt I had to. Um, so yeah, so yeah, this is my, I need to add some adhesive to that, don't I? This is my tall hexagon box. So I have done one in centimetres, as you can see. I always seem to use crumb cake now. That is because I ordered an extra pack by mistake, so I had tons of it. So I thought, actually, that's quite handy because it'll let everybody know this is the centimetre one. What I wanted to show you was that you have the option of two closures. So it's exactly the same box, um, just that where these parts here are sticking out I've tucked them inside on this one so I'm gonna do this with the one I make with you just so you can see but I'll show you how to do both um, but yeah um, and as you can see if I undo this one you can see that we it is a, a really good size really good size box um, if you wanted to add um, you know punches or something to the bottom of left or adhesive on there look if you wanted to add a circle punch or die cut uh, just to make the bottom tidy then feel free i've just left mine blank because basically nobody looks at the bottom do they um and again if you wanted to add one inside just to make it tidier but or you could even once it's glued up and you've got the shape correct just draw around it and cut it out and stick it on but anyway let's go ahead and make this so you're going to need some cardstock that is nine and a half by seven and a half inches, 25 and a half by 19 centimeters. On the short side, we're going to score at one and three eighths and five and three quarters. That will be three and a half and 14 and a half centimeters. We're going to rotate it anti clockwise. And on the long side, we're going to score at one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, and nine. And in centimetres, that will be four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, and twenty-four. Whilst you've got this here, we're then going to mark at three quarters. So you're literally just putting a very small mark just on the card three quarters, two and a quarter, three and three quarters, five and a quarter, six and three quarters, and eight and a quarter. And in centimetres that will be two, six, ten, fourteen, eighteen, and twenty-two. Okay. Where well, you've made these marks, bad roller again. Um, we are going to go with from the mark down to the score line okay so you can just about see that so yeah so we're going from the mark we're doing a triangle this is where we get these shapes from so we're going to go along and score and just I'm going to go all the same oops got a bit excited then I'm going to go all the same one way save twisting and turning the card constantly and then turn it and go back the opposite way all the way along to the end last one there we go okay Fold now all of your, can you see how the sun's bleached my card? I was away at the weekend, uh, well, I'm saying at the weekend when this comes out, so okay, I was away last month um, and I prepared all my videos ready for filming but just ran out of time. 
Um, so I left them on the floor in my craft room. Well, that, that caused a tale of two stories. Firstly, um, my husband came in to me when I was watching TV just before I went away and said, what is this? Um, and it was silver foil off some chocolates that I'd left in a box prepared on the floor and my dog had been in and got them. So I was not impressed with that. Um, and secondly, yeah, unfortunately, the sun came through and bleached my card. But luckily, that's on the inside so you can't see it. Okay, so once we've done all of that folding and burnishing, we're going to go on this section we haven't scored the diagonals on. And we're just going to cut up each one. All the way along to the end. Then we're going to get rid of that. Oops. Okay. Then we are going to go along and fold now. Uh, let me see. Yes, yeah, so if you want your sections here to come out, you fold this outwards. Now you can go along with your bone folder um, and yeah, just, just basically you can go along and re rescore them. If you want your bag to go, if you want your sections to um, go inwards you'd fold it the opposite way so you'd go that way with it okay so it's entirely whichever way you want to go with it I'm just getting my brain gear here okay so as you can see I'm literally just folding one way in the other and then going over this piece here what you can do is fold it over get your ruler and just follow the previous score line underneath just to give you the fold that you need for it to bend okay right let's get some DSP on these so I've done these already but you'd need six and the easiest way to do this is a strip of DSP that is five and three quarters by one and a quarter, 15 by three and a half. With your trimmer we are going to score on the long side at four and three eighths so four and three eighths just going to score across there and then I'm going to sneeze I apologize oh no it's not is it <coughs> bless me <laughs> sorry about that um and then you want to mark the top at five eighths of an inch or 1.7 if you're seriously struggling just fold it in half because that's all it is so five eighths um one two three four five is just there and to be honest i find it easier to actually get my scoring tool and just mark in the groove because trying to do all of that yeah it's just too much okay once you've done that you either get a pencil or a or you score, oops, score your angle, and it is just to mark, so if you can see there, and then I'm just simply going to cut down like so. That is the bend you need for the box, so it will just sit on its own line there. And then you just need to add your adhesive and get them stuck on. So, as I failed with my other box, just make sure you run your adhesive to the top. And when you place it, place your fold and just bear in mind your angle because you can quite easily... Let's get rid of that ex excess adhesive there. You can quite easily put it on wonky okay so let's 
Turn that round. So yeah, so when you're popping this on, like I said, just make sure your point is central. And the rest should sit in. Try not to um, light flat, because that won't really work either. And then just work your way along, adding, adding your panels. And as I say, you need six in total. So sorry. Yeah, did I give you... Um, so yes, yeah. so your DSP is five and three quarters by one and a quarter, 15 by three and a half. You score the long side, and again, if you have directional paper, pay attention to which side you're scoring. Um, uh, yeah, four and three eighths, or 11 centimetres. I think I missed that measurement out. And then, um, mark the top at five eighths, or 1.7, basically halfway. And then you can either draw, cut, score your centre line and create your um, triangle on the top. So just squeeze this in. And it does actually go pretty much down to the base here. Last one. And then we can put this delightful box together. Last one, last one. So pop it on the fold first, line the point of that up, and then there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to put some adhesive down here and join all of this together. So this should now all line up. Oh, look, it's taking shape. And then wherever... Oh, I've got the adhesive stuck somewhere. Wherever your join is... My join must be quite good because I can't find it. There you are. So I'm going to start here. So I'm just going to lay those out. And I actually, again, find this easier to use a little bit of wet glue. So I'm just going to pop the first one in. And I'm going to add some adhesive. And it's not much, just to that corner. Because I know that I'm working my way round... Equally, this isn't exact, so I want to make sure that I get them all there and then I sort of squeeze a manoeuvre. So as you can see, look, it moves around, but I just want to make sure that I get that shape the right way and then I'm just going to hold it just for a second. You may need to add more adhesive if you want. I'm just going to press it from underneath to get my shape. There we go. Then you need to grab whichever um, medium you're using to close it up. So, like I said, you um, start wherever you like really. I'm using the inverted triangle where um, these are going to pop out. And I'm just squeezing them together. Again, if you want to measure this, feel free. Um, now did I use the small or the large? Small. Um, and I'm literally... So I have... You can, with these, mark as and where you wish. Ouch. Um, so yeah, you're just going to pinch the non-DSP triangle. And then we're just going to work our way round all of these pinching and punching. Obviously you need to try and get them relatively in the same place. And then once you've done that, you can then add your ribbon. So, that's that done. Get rid of those because it'll drive me nuts if they're all over the desk. Okay, so if you were creating my first box, these would tuck in. So you would tuck all of those inwards. Okay, but because I'm doing mine the opposite way, I want them all facing outwards. That's the back. 
then I need ribbon. So I have my soft succulent open weave ribbon here. And then you're just going to start from the front, whichever whichever you have as the front, and you're just going to work your way around. Now, if, like me, you don't have the patience for this, I have um, darning needle, a bobbin, whatever anybody calls it. It's quite a large needle. Um, and I'm literally just going to thread my ribbon through and this does make it a lot quicker squeeze those holes together because we've already punched them in fact you can't do it that way oh I've done this back to front in terms of the oh no wait a minute oh no you can you can kind of loop from one to another so you can just go through and as I said this will make it a lot quicker than trying to feed that ribbon through by yourself and it stops the end of the ribbon fraying too which is also very helpful look at that see done in seconds so let's pull some of this ribbon through just because I have a longer end and then you if you pull it it should famous last words I've done this the wrong way around Anyway, this should now, that's right, it might, like me, take your brain a minute to fathom it out. I think it's because my ribbon is the wrong way round. Okay, more haste, less speed. Let me quickly undo that. Good job I had my... Uh, needle isn't it otherwise it would have taken even longer and I'd still be threading it and then get it wrong okay and that's why I said the pinching would have worked okay I'm gonna do it right I'm not determined to leave it wrong for you guys to see right Let's thread this, erase that part, and we will thread this as I had before. So, when you want to thread your ribbon, <laughs> pinch the two pieces together. I did suggest this before, but I'd obviously started off wrong, so it didn't work. That's it. Pinch them together, thread them through, and see how much quicker that is. Right. <laughs> now, when you pull it, it will automatically close your bag the way you wanted it to. So, let's give that a little tie. And obviously, as you see, you pull it and it will just tighten it up. Add your ribbon. It's probably a bit too big, that bow. There we go, trim those tails and then I'm going to very quickly show you my stamped image. So there it is, like I said, two options of closing. So I have the label me lovely punch, some beautiful basic white. That I'm just going to, it does fit, I just, I think I was trying to be, uh, a scrimp and save because I didn't want to waste any. Okay, so do some stamping. Pansy patch. Love pansy patch. So, small flowers. So let me grab some blocks. So I'm going for the two smaller flowers here. This one is the larger one. So one on there, one on there. And then I need from the other sheet. I need this small one here and then the little black dot for the centre which I'll pop on there and then for the leaves 
um, it's not that piece for the leaves just these little ones here that one and that one so let's get that out of the way okay so center outside and then my leaf separate right depending which orientation you want your punch you simply need to grab your inks now I went with for this one magenta madness polished pink oh yes that's right so polished pink so the first thing you want to do is use the full image whoops nearly stamp stamp off and then stamp your flower so stamp stamp off add your flower then with the more detailed image we're going to stamp that in full colour I just need to try and line these up there we go and then with my magenta madness I'm going to use oh squeaky that is this sort of centre imagey bit here I'm going to put that one on just like so I hadn't um, used these colours as a combination before so interestingly we'll see how this looks um, Memento is for the little black centre piece and also for my sentiment so I'm going to leave that there for a second and then for my leaves I just used soft succulent and I did the same again so the full image stamped off just like so then the detailed one just lay it over the top and then back with Memento and my sentiment which I used there they are thank you and I've just stuck that hopefully it will show up on here hmm not too brilliantly but brilliantly enough and then just a couple of dimensionals on the back and I put them lengthways down the centre because of the panels on the box oh yes actually I do like that combo and there they are my delightful tall hexagon box thanks for joining me see you all again soon bye